Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This is David Shoemaker, and I'd like to welcome you to Living Thelema. Now, this month we're going to go back to the basics, and I'm going to talk to you about the Star Ruby, which of course is one of the most fundamental rituals in the Thelemic canon, and one that uh, I highly recommend you explore as a potential addition to your daily regimen. Now, um, the Star Ruby was written around 1912 and first appeared in the Book of Lies. Um, as you may know, it was chapter 25 in the Book of Lies, and this is kind of a Kabbalistic clue as to its uh, meaning, since the pentagram refers to the number 5, and 5 times 5 is 25, of course. Um, so, as Crowley talks about in several places, that's the reason for the enumeration of the chapter. Um, now, I, I mentioned this on the segment about the lesser ritual of the pentagram, one of the very earliest Living Thelema segments, and um, I'm still not aware, aware of any direct evidence that Crowley actually used the Star Ruby himself, or even taught it uh, actively. Um, I, I know he was teaching the uh, traditional lesser ritual of the pentagram with the addition of uh, Iwas at the heart as late as the 1940s. So, um, you know, it's, it's a curious thing that he's clearly recommending this as a Thelemic uh, expansion of the pentagram formula as a Thelemic variant of the basic pentagram ritual, but, um, you know, still continuing to use some traditional forms throughout his life. Nevertheless, um, in my opinion, it's a powerful ritual and certainly worthy of um, exploration and experimentation. So let's start with a little bit of theory uh, about where you might want to use the Star Ruby and, and how you might want to use it. Basically, um, as I've referenced, it's a replacement in many senses for the lesser ritual of the pentagram. You generally wouldn't be doing both a banishing ritual, the a traditional banishing ritual of the pentagram and the, the star ruby in the same setting. Uh, and you would generally, if you had, for example, used a lesser invoking ritual of the pentagram as an opening ritual, you would generally close with the traditional lesser banishing ritual rather than banishing with the star ruby. So just try to stay consistent with it. Um, now the interesting thing about the existing form of the star ruby as, as Crowley left it to us is that there really is no invoking form of this ritual. Um, unlike the lesser ritual of the pentagram where you have specific invoking and banishing forms depending on how you draw the, the pentagrams, this is only a banishing ritual. Now, that doesn't mean that forces aren't invoked, and one of the things we'll talk about right now is the energetic properties of the ritual, if you will. Now, certainly in... Uh, in its similarities to the lesser ritual of the pentagram, the traditional form, um, you have components that correspond to the four elements, and you do some equilibrating actions that bring you to the center of those four elements, and then uh, there's a climactic section. And in this particular ritual, um, the, the really unique things about, the thing about this ritual, uh, contrasted with the traditional form, is that in that central climactic section, you're not just proclaiming yourself as Lord of the Elements. Uh, you're proclaiming that you are at Tefereth as the spirit point that is crowning the, the four elements. But here, you're taking it a step further and using the formula of Knox to assert dominion over the Tree of Life all the way up to Bina, all the way up to the, the supernal triad. So for that reason, this ritual for me experientially, and you can certainly and should certainly verify this for yourself with your own experimentation, but for me it, it's like a combination of a banishing and invoking in some ways. The elemental aspects of the ritual give me that sense of cleanliness that we associate with the banishing, and then the, the uh, elevation of the consciousness through the Sephiroth above Tefereth via the signs of Knox and such, um, really gives that sense of holiness that we associate with a good invoking ritual. So, interesting hybrid in, in some ways here. Now, um, I should mention a little bit more about the formula of Knox that is uh, in play here. You might want to review the Living Thelema segment on the formulae of Lux and Knox, uh, which I did several months ago. Um, as, a, as a more detailed assessment of this, but basically um, 
the magician arrives at Teferith, focused on the formula of Lux, whereby they um, are aimed at that one star in sight that is the Holy Guardian Angel. Then, having attained that marriage with the angel, the courtship continues in increasing intimacy until the focus begins to shift to giving up one's identity into the cup of Babylon associated with Binah and the supernals in general. So that, that supernal night, which is the NOX, the, the, uh, the night of Pan. And speaking of Pan, um, the climax of, of the, the ritual really is, um, an exclamation of Yo Pan to identify with that supernal all, that supernal night that is at the core of the formula of Nox and the formula of the Grail. Um, so, enough uh, theory. As usual, we're going to try to keep it mostly practical here today. Um, but I wanted you to have a little bit of that uh, that background. So, let's look at the ritual a little more carefully. There's two primary versions that have been published. One was the original in the Book of Lies, and the, the other was in Magic and Theory and Practice. Now, um, today we're going to focus on the Book of Lies version for a couple reasons. One is that it uses the attributions to the quarters the elemental attributions to the quarters that are also used in the Lesser Ritual of the Hexagram um, as used in the Second Order Vault of the Golden Dawn. So uh, if you've listened to my uh, segment on the Lesser Ritual of the Hexagram, you'll know that the published versions of the Hexagram Ritual um, are using a, a formula that generally would have only been used within the Vault of the Second Order Golden Dawn Temple or the equivalent for an individual magician. So, in any case, it's, it's, a, it's a neat formula. It's a, it's a tidy formula that has some precedence in our other work that we've discussed. The Magic in Theory and Practice version, however, uh, has a different set of attributions which appear, perhaps, to have been kind of a work in progress with perhaps some editorial mistakes uh, that don't quite line up, and so it's really more than I can go into in, in, in this segment, but suffice it to say that there's enough debate and confusion, um, at least in my mind, about that uh, MTP version of the ritual that we're going to focus on the Book of Lies version today. Now, I've mentioned these different ways of attributing the elements to the quarters here, and I should explain where those are derived from. And um, the key is looking at the way Crowley describes how you pronounce the names at the quarters. For example, in the Book of Lies version that we're going to talk about today, the four names are Kaos, Babylon, Eros, and Suke. And um, he says, for example, to roar, Kaos. Roar is the sound of a lion. Lion is Leo. Leo is fire. Fires in the east, so we have fire attributed to the east with chaos. Babylon is screamed, he says. And the uh, old attribution of um, Scorpio to water, the eagle would have been the care of, and the eagle is has that screaming sound, so that's where he gets that, and we put, therefore, water in the north. We move around to the west, and he says to say eros, and simply speaking something is what the man does, and the man's attributed to Aquarius, and we have therefore an air, so we have uh, air in the west. And then finally you move to the south, and bello suke. Uh, bello is the sound of the bull, bull is Taurus, Taurus is earth, so earth's in the south. So again, what we have is yod he vav -e, fire, water, air, earth, counterclockwise, starting in the east, and that's the same set of attributions that are used inside uh, the vault uh, in the Golden Dawn. Now you can certainly learn a lot more about this ritual by studying the Kabbalistic formulae that are encoded in the various words of the ritual, but uh, in keeping with our purpose here with Living Philema to be more practical and experiential, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that, but I strongly encourage your own research into the Greek gematria um, of uh, the various words. So let's step through the ritual uh, point by point. 
First instruction is facing east in the center, draw deep, deep, deep thy breath, closing thy mouth with thy right forefinger pressed against thy lower lip. Now, this is the sign of silence, one variant of it anyway, and the sign of Harpocrates. Any time you give this sign, as I said in the segment on Liberesh, any time you give this sign is an opportunity for you to assume the god form of Harpocrates and seal the aura, um, strengthen the body of light, uh, really, as Crowley has sometimes said, become the Kabbalistic zero. The, uh, this, is, this is really a chance to, to center yourself before doing anything else. Okay. Then the next instruction is dashing down the hand with the great sweep back and out, expelling forcibly thy breath, cry, Apopontos Kakodaimonos. And uh, essentially you're exclaiming uh, with this gesture that all uh, of the distracting, dispersive uh, forces that may be present in the room or in your psyche go away. The, it's roughly equivalent to the Hekas Hekas Este Bebeloi that you might have heard from the Golden Dawn and, and things like that. Um, the next instruction is with the same forefinger, meaning the right forefinger, touch thy forehead and say, Soi, thy member, in other words the genitals, and say, O Fale, thy right shoulder and say, Iskuros, thy left shoulder and say, Eucharistos, then clasp thine hands, locking the fingers, and cry, Yao. As with the standard lesser ritual of the pentagram, um, here's an opportunity for you to really center yourself experientially in that cross that you're drawing on your body, um, climaxing with holding your clasped hands over the heart with the Yao and uh, imagining that's the center of that cross. Um, you're going to recapitulate the fourfold balancing when you go to the quarters with the elements, but here's the first place that you kind of formulate it. Next, you go to the east. And unlike the lesser ritual of the pentagram where you're tracing pentagrams with your finger or your weapon, here you're imagining the pentagrams at your forehead in the middle of an upward pointed triangle that you're making with your hands. Uh, at least that's what I recommend with it. So you, you go to the east, you raise your hands up to your forehead, making a, a triangle like you would doing um, Libra Resh at noon, and formulate, I like to use a red pentagram, uh, in the middle of that triangle at the forehead. Breathe deeply, as with any vibration of uh, names of power, you want to feel yourself drawing in energy with the breath, and then as you breathe out the name and fully express it energetically, you're giving the, the sign of the intro or the sign of Horus, as he calls it here, and um, flinging that pentagram infinitely out to the quarter that you're facing. So maybe see it springing forth from between your hands and forehead, um, growing larger and larger out to the quarter, so that in your astral vision it is about the size of the entire wall in front of you, but but your inner conception of that is that you have sent it all the way out to the infinity, infinities of of the uh, of the quarter you're facing, and then you retire, as he says, retire thy hand in the sign of four pakrat, which means come back to the the sign of silence with your right hand on your lower lip, uh, and in this case, as I said before, you're in the east and you are roaring, so to speak, chaos. Then you go around to the north and formulate the pentagram in the same way, but scream Babylon. Notice you're going counterclockwise, right, in contrast to the lesser ritual of the pentagram traditionally. Keep going around to the west and repeat uh, saying Eros. Then go around to the south and repeat, but bellow suke. Complete the circle back to the east and go back to the center. Now before we move on from there, I want to point out um, one thing that I think is fairly important and is not written in the ritual, and that is trace a connecting line between the pentagrams, just like you do in the traditional lesser ritual of the pentagram. Um, experiment 
and and see what you feel about it. But I, I feel a lot better doing this ritual with the connecting line and the sense of the strength of the circle that I'm making. It would feel just as strange to do the lesser ritual, the pentagram, in the traditional form, and not do a connecting circle. So I recommend it. Um, so you've completed the circuit of the quarters, you're, you've come back to the center, and the next instruction is to raise thy voice in the paean, which is basically to say a, an exclamation of thanksgiving or triumph. Um, here's where we, and, and Crowley says, uh, with the words yopan and the signs of nox. That's how you're supposed to deliver this exclamation of triumph and, uh, and thanksgiving. Um, in a letter to Charles Stansfield Jones, um, Frater Achad, uh, from around 1916, Crowley um, gave what I feel is the most complete description of the correct way of doing the signs of Knox. And um, I should mention that I'm going to put on the podcast blog a full video of me performing the entirety of the Star Ruby so that you can see not only the actions, but also the specific way that I do the signs of Knox and uh, all the other things I'm describing here, the pronunciations of the words, for example. Um, I just feel that that's, that's going to be an easier way to, to get across all this information rather than trying to describe it all. Um, so um, watch for the signs of Knox on the video in terms of the particular way they're given. Basically, you're giving the signs sequentially, moving up from... from um, Gabura, so you're going through the grades of Adeptus Major, Adeptus Exemptus, um, Babe of the Abyss, and Magister Templi. Um, so um, you're doing those in order, and then climaxing with uh, with an, the exclamation Yopan. Then um, the uh, next gesture is extending the arms in the form of a towel cross, and he says, say low but clear, and then gives a series of, of words that you pronounce, um, which are bas basically analogous to the words you're saying in the traditional lesser ritual, the pentagram, where you, uh, in, in that form, you'd be naming the archangels that were the wardens of the four quarters, but here you're naming four orders of mythological beings that are the wardens of those quarters. Um, as with the traditional form, I suggest that as you pronounce the names of these four um, orders of beings, that you identify as strongly as possible with the element of that quarter. Um, one effective way of doing this, uh, rather than trying too hard to anthropomorphize these figures as, as if you're building a singular image um, like you would have perhaps with the archangels in the lesser ritual, um, here, I, I think it, it may work better for you to see the entire quarter uh, filled with a brilliant light of the elemental color. So when you're in the east and it's fire, um, and you're projecting that name of um, Kaos, you know, you, you're seeing a fiery realm there uh, filled with, with red light. And similarly, when you're back here at the center um, for the climax of the ritual, and you say promu yuges, then you see that fiery realm again. Um, so the the full uh, set of words here associated with with this segment of the ritual is promu yuges, opisumu telatarkai, epidexia sinokes, eparastero daimonos, and so you've surrounded yourself with the four orders there, and then flegiga perimu or astroton pente. For about me flames the pentagram basically or the star of five and then kain tistele oaster tonex esteke and there you're surrounding yourself with the uh the six rayed star so again analogous to the the traditional form of the ritual um, and then finally you just repeat the the first section um soe ophale uh, iskaros yukaristo siao and then do the gesture with uh, the sign of silence and apopatos kakadominos uh, one more time. So I told you we're going back to the basics here today, and that's basically the ritual. Um, again, I'm going to put a full video of the performance of this ritual on 
uh, the resources page at livingthelema.com, and there will be a link to that on the podcast blog. Also, there will be links to both the Book of Lies version and the Magic and Theory and Practice version um, uh, on the blog as well. As always, if you have questions or comments, uh, please email me at livingthelema at me.com. And go ahead and, uh, if you wish, like our uh, Facebook page, the Living Thelema Facebook page. Uh, we do sometimes have discussions there, and of course you'll get updates on uh, various things related to the podcast and my lectures and such. And uh, please visit livingthelema.com for uh, resources for many of the segments that we've done over these last uh, many months, and uh, more information about my, uh, my work, my biography, and that sort of thing. So thanks very much for listening again, and uh, I will look forward to talking to you next time. Love is the law, love under will.